Welcome to Theological Grazing. So I just read a book that one of the elders at our church gave to me. And uh, John, thank you if you're listening to this. This thought was spurred by what you gave me. Uh, But I read a book um, that was given to me um, that was uh, How to Think Like Shakespeare. Um, And it was great. It was a great book. It was all about uh, Renaissance era education. And it, just some interesting thoughts, really good if you're into classical education, if you're working in some form uh, with uh, classical Christian education, I'd highly recommend picking this up. Um, really, really fascinating in a lot of ways. The thing that stuck out to me that made me want to talk about it today is that there was a line in the book, and I don't remember who this came from. It's probably a famous quote, so I'm sorry that I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm not quoting exactly who said it. But quoted in the book uh, was this phrase that says, "The art of making the mirror in which we see ourselves." Art of making the the mirror in which we see ourselves, and that is a great phrase. And I think actually cuts to the heart of why many people would rather be consumers rather than creators. And what I mean by that is, is that um, if it's true, and I think it's true, at least to a point, that making something is in some sense a reflection on you. It's a reflection of your skill, of your abilities. It's a reflection of your knowledge. It's a reflection overall of what you can do. And that's scary because that means it's a kind of a mirror. It exposes something about you. It shows something about you. Um, or really, I mean, I guess it's better to just say it reflects you in some way. And of course it does, right? God created the world and it reflects him. It reflects his glory, his perfections, his attributes. We are made in his image, reflecting him, made to reflect him all the more clearly. There's so many places that we could go with this. But for today, just thinking about a mirror is reflecting and making something as a kind of a mirror. Many, I think, are afraid to make things because they're going to see themselves in it and they're afraid of what they're going to see. They're afraid that they're going to see a failure. They're afraid that they're going to see somebody who can't actually do what they want. They're afraid that they're not going to see the ideal that's in their mind, right? Because sometimes when you look at in a mirror, you see the pimples and the the spots. You see the, the fact that your face is not symmetrical. You see all of these things that you realize are not in your mind's eye as the ideal look. And making something, creating things, does the same thing. So what do you do to get away from that? Well, you just become a consumer, an endless consumer. You just start taking in more and more. You just start start being somebody who consumes what others make but never making yourself. And so you can critique all you want, You can point out blemishes and problems and what others make and create. You can talk about how bad other people are at this, but you'll never actually get off the couch and make something yourself because that's when it gets scary. That's when it gets difficult and um, a little bit frightening because you're going to see yourself in it. And there's part of us that probably knows, oh, I'm not actually going to be as good as... I think I am. Um, I'm not going to look as good as I can maintain this mental image of right now because I'm going to have to actually see what I look like. And I just want to encourage you to stop doing that. (laughs) If that's you, just stop and go make something. Go do something. If there's something, a skill that you've always wanted to have, if there's something you've always wanted to create, go do that. Because it's in the doing that you learn the don'ting. Right? That's a phrase I stole from the Farmstead Meat Smith. I think I've maybe talked about it. 
But I love, oh, I love that phrase. It's in the doing that you learn the don'ting. It's through actually creating and making that you're gonna figure out how not to. You're gonna fail, you will. You will fail pretty significantly and you're going to be embarrassed sometimes about your failures. You're going to feel a bit humiliated, humbled, and that's a good thing, right? Working with the real world, not just staying in your idealized world in your head is going to be so beneficial and enriching to you because you were made to do it. You were made to make and create and to do rather than simply consume. I remember, you know, it's weird making a podcast, even talking to you right now. Now, it's a little bit easier because very, uh, it's just not that many of you listen to this. You know, a lot more people listen to the Restless podcast, so it maybe changes a little bit. But, you know, it's a, you know, I could fit everybody that listens to this podcast in my house, probably. You know, I mean, it's, it's not that many. And so it feels a little bit smaller. It feels like I'm talking to you like we're, you're in the car with me. That's what I'm imagining right now. I can imagine the faces of some of you that listen to this because I know who you are. So it, it seems a little bit different um, in that sense. But when I first started to do this, I learned really quick that, you know, I had always thought that, you know, doing a podcast or like, you know, creating a lot of things that you put out into the world, into the internet. I always imagined that this was a little bit something that you would do out of pride, that you'd really like, you know, uh, that you would really take pride in yourself and what you're doing. And it would kind of build up your arrogance a little bit. It would build up your ego. And I, for a long time, I didn't do a lot of it for that very reason because um, I was a little bit worried about that. And so when I first started to do this because I thought it would be a useful, it would be a helpful use of my time, I didn't realize how humiliating it would be because you get stuff wrong and things don't sound right. You have to, re- you have to listen to your voice a lot. I don't know how often you listen to your own voice. I listen to my own voice a lot and I don't like it. <laughs> I don't love listening to my own voice. It's, it's difficult because you hear all of the issues. Even there are going to be things that I notice that no one else notices, but I know are not right or they're not what I meant to communicate or, you know, I'm often using these filler words like, like, and, uh, and <laughs> I'm filling the space all the time. I don't like that I do that. So I I hear all these things that I wish were different. But it's been so beneficial and helpful to actually do it, to create, to make something for so many reasons, right? Because it's helped other people, because it is, I believe, working toward helping others to think more biblically about the world. And that is a good thing. That is an end in itself. I want people to know and love God more and more. And also just on a personal level, to make something, to create something, to maintain it has been really enriching and helpful and has encouraged me that actually there are probably more things I could do that I'm a little bit afraid of or fearful of. And so I should try it. Anyway, that's just some thoughts. Making it is uh, like a mirror. And so I encourage you, go, go look at yourself. Go make something, go do something. And maybe you'll find something that needs to change and that's okay. That's all right. That's one of the reasons we use a mirror. Well, that's all, folks. If you can help me out, rate and review this podcast, share it with a friend, go ahead and email me if you have any questions. We're out.